everybody, Daniel Mosnet here with Cowboy Charcoal. And look at this, we've got our hickory briquettes that we're gonna show you how to make a fantastic acorn squash dish that you're gonna love. You're gonna use it all the time. It's easy, you throw it on the grill, super simple to do. First thing we've got to do is get a two zone fire started. Now, one of the things you're going to want to learn is how to do a two zone fire. And a two zone fire works great for everything, for steaks, for low and slow, for all kinds of different applications, because you have one part of your grill that stays nice and hot, and then you have another part of your grill that you can move your food over to so it's not going to burn while it's accepting all of those fantastic smoke and charcoal flavors and make sure that you can cook through all the different foods that you're cooking. So first step is let's get our two zone fire going in our hasty bake grill right back here. We've got a barbecue starter. These are great if you can find one because you can get your starter underneath the charcoal and it can make sure that you have enough oxygen to keep your charcoal burning. So let's pour our briquettes right on top. If I'm not using a charcoal chimney, I try to arrange these as much as I can in, in a pyramid shape. We're using our Cowboy Wood Wool Fire Starters because they start so quickly. This will take about 15 minutes to be fully lit and ready to go. And that's it, you just reach in there and light your fire starter. And you can see the fire's already starting to come up through there. You can already see some smoke happening. So this is gonna take us about 15 minutes to get started. So while that's getting ready, let's get our acorn squash going. Okay, so now that our fire's going, it's gonna take about 15 minutes or so for those briquettes to become nice and ashed over before we're ready to use them. I'm gonna show you what to do with acorn squash. Now, a lot of you may have seen these in the grocery store. They look good in a cornucopia. Maybe you set them out for decoration. You're not really sure what to do with them. Well, let's show you. They're really simple. There's all kinds of these as well. These, this is a green acorn. There's a golden acorn squash that they let sit out in the field a little bit longer and they turn nice and gold. So those are a nice color. They taste about the same. You've got butternut squash here. There's kabocha squash. There's all kinds of different varieties that you can choose from and you treat them all about the same. The difference in size is gonna be about how long you're need to, gonna need to cook them. A small acorn like this is probably gonna take about 30 to 35 minutes. Something a little bit larger might take about 45 minutes to an hour. It just depends on the size of the product that you're cooking. So um, use a toothpick to test if it's done. If it's soft, it's ready to eat. If it's still a little bit hard to the touch, then you need to cook it a little bit longer. So the easiest way to cut an acorn squash is just straight through. Easy for you to say. All the way through all the way through the end. And what you're gonna find is you're gonna find seeds just like a pumpkin. So all you have to do with the seeds is just scoop them right out, just like you would do if you were carving a pumpkin. Just take a spoon, just like that, and you're ready to go. You can even roast these seeds just like a, a pumpkin. That's what Kita Roberts at Girl Carnivore, that's what she says to do. So she may have a recipe on her website if you go there, girlcarnivore.com. So now you've got your acorn squash cleaned. If you're gonna do the butternut squash, you're gonna do the exact same thing. We've got a great recipe at cowboycharcoal.com showing how to use a butternut squash. So if you're interested, check that out there. Now, before we get started with our filling, I like to add just a little bit of olive oil and just spread it around the inside. It helps it from turning brown. You know how when you cut an avocado or something like that, sometimes it turns brown a little bit because it oxidizes? That's the same thing. So you're just gonna wanna just spread a little bit of olive oil all the way around. It also helps it golden up and crisp up a little bit when you're cooking it. Okay, so now for our filling. Now for our internal seasoning, we're gonna add a little bit of butter, always with the butter, a little bit of Dijon mustard, as much as you like, and it just helps to give it a little bit of flavor, a little bit of brown sugar, and a little bit of salt and pepper. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. That's the filling, that's all you need to do, really simple. And then we're just gonna stir this around, make sure that all of the brown sugar is broken up and make sure you get that butter well incorporated all the way through and then just mix it up. Just like a little, 
like a little whip or like a little dip. You can do this ahead of time. You can do this a couple of days ahead of time. No problem. And you should have a consistency pretty close to that. And then you're just gonna scoop about half into one, scoop the other half into the other. Now really all you have in here is brown sugar and butter with the Dijon. So all of this is gonna melt. So it's gonna look like you have a lot of filling or mixture in there. Make sure you get all the sides. You really don't because all of this is gonna melt into the squash. All the way around the sides. You could just do this with butter and sprinkle brown sugar over the top if you like. This is a little bit extra and it's gonna make it taste so good. The butter might be a little extreme, but you don't cook these that often, so why not? Okay, so once those are done, we'll take some pecans. We'll just toss some pecans right over the top. Many as you like, give it a little bit of crunch and then they'll be roasted as well. And that's it, that's the whole recipe. Took just a few minutes. Let's check on our grill. We're rolling right now at about 350 degrees or so. You wanna cook these around 350 to 400 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes. We're gonna set this on the side in our cooler zone of our two zone fire. We're gonna let that bake for about 30 to 45 minutes or so until it's just fork tender on the sides. Let's show you what that looks like. You can see we've got a couple that we've been cooking for a little while just so we can show you. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna set these two right on the cooler side. We've got our warmer zone right here. We've got our cooler zone right on this side. These have been cooking for about 40 minutes. And you can see just easy fork tender. The fork goes right in and you've got all of that, those pecans, those nice roasted pecans and butter. Fork just goes right into each one. All right, there you have it. An easy squash recipe for dinner tonight. You can do this with any of the hard squash that you find in the produce department. And make sure you like, follow, and subscribe for these and so many more great recipes. I'm Daniel Mosnet with Cowboy Chargol. Until next week, keep cooking with Cowboy. Cowboy.